Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. Today I'll be continuing with the fretboard. Now I know it's been a while since the last video, but I've had to do a lot of experimenting just to figure out how I'm going to do certain things, and I still mess things up. But I'll show you that in a minute. I'm going to be putting in fret markers that are going to be located on the top side of the fretboard and will be both the side and top markers, and they're going to glow in the dark. I started off by cutting the fret slots in the zebra wood fretboard using a special saw blade that is only 23 thousandths of an inch thick. I also made a fretboard mock-up using MDF that I'll use as a template for my fret markers. On the template, I have to lay out exactly where the markers will go and I'll use the drill press to cut the holes that I'll use later to route out the fret markers on the fretboard. I'm using the center line on the fretboard to line up my template so that when the fretboard is routed to the dimensions of the neck, the circles will become half. Now I'm using a small trim router with a very small bit to make precise cuts in the fretboard. Of course, none of this worked out and I had to start all over, but you get the idea of how it works. The second template I made allowed me to just use my drill press to cut the fretboard, but using the template with a router would have allowed me to make more complex shapes. So I learned a lot for future builds. Here's another place I messed things up. Using a jig I built, I'm putting the radius on the fretboard. This jig allows me to cut any radius I want on a fretboard all the way from a 7 inch to a 20 inch and even compound radiuses. I'm using a 12 inch radius, but I should have waited to do this after I put in the fret markers. It wasn't a huge mistake, but one that did make things a little bit harder. I'm using epoxy to fill the fret marker cavities with sky blue glow in the dark powder added to it, which will go nicely with the finish I have planned for the instrument. Of course my camera's battery died during this process, but I used a syringe to apply the epoxy slowly, which ensured that I had no bubbles and no voids. As you can see in the pictures, the epoxy is just a little proud of the fretboard. Since I already radius the fretboard, this is necessary so that I can sand the epoxy flush with the fretboard. If I had waited to radius the fretboard until after I had added the epoxy, it would have saved me this step. Now you may be asking, how good can this stuff glow in the dark? I don't think that will be an issue. So next time I'll try to finish up the neck profile, but we'll see how that goes. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. If you have some ideas on how I could have done things a little better, please leave a comment below. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.